Good morning everybody, this is Aaron from TheRuggestore.com. Today I want to walk you through a pretty simple project, how to install and or update the RAM in your Panasonic Toughbook CF31. Now all Toughbooks, Toughbooks and tough pads are not created equal, so this is just a walkthrough for the RAM in the 31. Two things of note before we get started. Uh, Panasonic has very specific uh, parts that have undergone rigorous testing, uh, research and development, and certifications. And if you put aftermarket parts in your Panasonic Toughbook and Toughpad, it voids the warranty. It has to be the certified part that Panasonic certifies for that Toughbook or Toughpad. Second thing to note, um, Panasonic also has warranty. So if, you're, if your unit is still under manufacturer's warranty, anyone that does any work or retrofits, repairs, etc. on their Toughbook or Toughpad or on someone else's Toughbook or Toughpad that is not licensed by Panasonic, will void that warranty. So if you're unsure about if your unit's still covered under warranty, make sure you talk to your manufacturer or your dealer. Make sure you call in before you do any work so that you don't accidentally void your warranty. So that's the fine print, but let's get started. So this is the Panasonic Toughbook CF31. It's a fully rugged form factor. This one is definitely not in grade A condition. This one's been kicked around parking lots on demonstration for fire departments, police departments, etc. It's one of my personal units, but it's tried and true and it still keeps on kicking. So first things first, make sure your unit is off before you do any work. And we're just going to flip it over to access the bottom cover. Now this port right here with six screws in it is going to be the port that we'll be removing to access where the RAM is. I've taken out the RAM of this unit for demonstration purposes. So when we open it up, you'll see that there's no RAM. So a uh, pretty simple tool, just a screwdriver. Make sure you got a small enough head on the screwdriver to fit these little screws. I like a little magnet tray because I got big clumsy fingers and the magnet tray makes sure I don't lose these screws. So go ahead and take out these first six screws. Okay, so we have the six screws removed and for me this back cover pops right off because I've taken it on and off a few times this morning already. But if it is stuck for some reason, as long as you've removed the first six screws, you see this little tab right here, you can insert a screwdriver or something right there and gently lever it out. The reason it would be stuck is because of this seal. Now you see that this is a compression seal. You see the ring where it would be pressing against the plastic. This seal is important to protect the integrity of these fragile components in here. So this would uh, protect it, help with the fully rugged nature of it, protect it against water, dust, etc. The compression seal as you tighten down those screws compresses against this plastic ridge and provides a nice seal. So that's the only reason it would be stuck. You know, that might have gotten hot, cold, etc., or whatever, but you can gently lever that off as long as you've removed the screws first. So we can set that to the side, and now you can kind of see the internal components. I'll swing it around so you can uh, see it a little better from your viewpoint. This one, uh, you can see that it has a wireless air card that allows this unit to access internet pretty much anywhere you have a cellular connection. We'll go through the uh, benefits of that and how to install that in a later video, but right now we're interested in the RAM. Now even closer you'll see that this is where the RAM would be if there's RAM. There's two slots so you can have uh, many different configurations of RAM. You could have a 4x4 four, four four to create a total of 8. You could have two slots of 8 to, uh, I'm sorry, cards of 8 gigabytes of RAM each, so for a total of 16. Uh, pretty much whatever you need for your purposes. What we're putting in today is a 4 gigabyte card of RAM and we're going to put it in the rear slot here. Now this is really the hardest part of the job, especially if you have big clumsy fingers like myself. It's pretty much uh, you're just trying to get it into that slot. You see there's two little tabs here that are going to be holding it into place. Uh, there's the back and front tabs on either side. They bend out but what you want to start doing is, I will try to keep this in your view and do it at the same time. You have a short part of the connection strip and a long part. Make sure that lines up correctly with the um, insertable slot. And like I said, this is the uh, most difficult part of the job if you <laughs> if you got big fingers. So what you're trying to do is just line it up and drop it into place with the ports or with the docking strip lined up. So uh, excuse me if I don't give you the best view right now, but uh, I'm just gonna try to get it in there with my fingers here. Feel free to work with whatever tools you got available. You know, if you have a, if 
you have a little screwdriver or whatever to help you lever it in, it kind of goes in at an angle. Okay, so if you stick it at an angle first and you see how it is standing up, it's lined up there. There's a little notch. I'm not sure if you can see it on the video, but the notch cut out of the ram slides up to the notch insert of the plastic piece so that you know that it's going to be fully seated. And once it looks like that and it's levered up, then you can gently press down on the rear of the unit or the card and pop it into place. Now you see the two tabs will automatically click in there. It's firm, firmly seated. The four gigabytes of RAM is installed in the unit as far as the hardware side goes. So the, just make sure it's nice firmly seated. It's not sliding around and you're good to go. So what we're gonna do then and uh, prepare for the magical fast forward as I fumble with these little screws is just put this cover back on as long as it is firmly seated, you confirmed that, whatever, uh, then you're going to just uh, put the screws back in, tighten them down, uh, just to make sure that you still have a nice firm seal of your unit. And uh, we're good to go on the hardware side. So I'm going to fast forward here before I wrap up, just so that I can get the screws in. Talk to you in a second. Okay, so that wraps up putting the RAM into the CF31 Panasonic Toughbook as far as the hardware side of things goes. If you go on over to our RuggedStore.com onto our blog, uh, we'll put a blog up here kind of detailing how to check configurations of RAM already in your unit, you know, without having to open it up to see just kind of what you have installed. Um, pretty much how to spot check the installation of the software to make sure you're installed on the right operating system. Uh, four gigabyte up to four gigabytes of RAM requires a 32-bit, but anything beyond that, eight gigabytes plus, will require a 64-bit operating system. We'll kind of detail that as simply as possible through our blog. You know, you can check out our blog on our website. But if you have any questions, um, feel free to hit us up at theruggestore.com. Email us, call us. Uh, always happy to talk to our customers. Um, one thing we do sell RAM. We do sell internal uh, components of Toughbooks. You know, so if you're looking for um, some hardware to update your Toughbook or Toughpad, feel free to give us a call about that. Or we do, can do the work for, your, uh, for you ourselves. Uh, we are licensed by Panasonic to do retrofits such as this. We have licensed techs. We have a whole tech room ready to take care of your needs. But So uh, feel free to contact us. And if you have any questions about this, leave this in the comments below or contact us through our website. Uh, talk to you soon. Again, this is Aaron from TheRuggedStore.com.